Uh, are you guys able to see it? Uh, can uh, I... Yes. Yes, right? Yes. Okay, right. Okay, so um, I am uh, Obli Chandran and I teach science and uh, I am a science communicator. So, of course, I'll tell about what uh, science communicator means uh, eventually as I run through the presentation. The topic for today is spotting uh, fake science news. So before I get into the topic, I would like to know uh, from you guys, you can type in the chat box, uh, if you have come across any such fake news, uh, you, you don't have to type the news, but have you come across such fake news? Uh, you guys, jumping? Uh, okay, yes. Okay, so you, you uh, guys have come across a lot. So let me jump it. So, uh, it is going to be like, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions as I uh, run through the presentation. I, I would like you to get guys to answer in the chat box like you, you guys are doing right now. Okay, thank you. So now, uh, so this is a, a definition that I have not uh, written. It is taken from, of course, Wikipedia. So what is fake news? Uh, fake news, also known as junk news, uh, pseudo news, alternative facts, or hoax news, or you can also call them conspiracies. Okay, so it's a form of news consisting of deliberate disinformation or hoaxes uh, spread via traditional news media or online social media. Okay, so which uh, the online social media aspect is what I'm going to focus on today. And fake news is written and published usually with the intent to mislead in order to damage an agency or entity or a person or to gain financially or politically. So this, I mean. Uh, this is this is self-explanatory, but this is just uh, I'm quoting it from Wikipedia so that you understand what is fake news. Fake is something that is not real, and when something is not real, uh, it could mean a lot of things to a lot of people, and it could uh, uh, it could have variety of consequences, uh, like we will discuss in the course of presentation. Okay, so now uh, since I told you it's going to be online platform, the uh, source of misinformation or the fake news. So I have picked up some of the medium where it is a spread like wildfire, all these fake news is like cluttered with uh, uh, all the fake news. So the top uh, most thing for adults, at least it is WhatsApp, because everybody has WhatsApp. Like if you have a mobile number and you have a decent phone, a smartphone, you can install WhatsApp and, and that is the most uh, widely used platform for communicating with others. So WhatsApp still remains the number one source of misinformation. And again, uh, of course you have Facebook. I'm not ranking them in order, but again, I'm just saying WhatsApp has a lot of uh, a scope for misinformation. And of course, Facebook, uh, a lot of scope is there and a lot of misinformation is out there. And YouTube, when I say YouTube, it is uh, channels. There are a lot of YouTube channels that uh, spread fake news or fake science news and misinformation. So of course, Twitter, Again, uh, I'm not sure a lot of you use Twitter, but again, uh, Twitter is a powerful platform where it can be used to uh, generate sources of fake news. And Instagram, when I say Instagram, it's mostly fake pictures, fake images. You know, Instagram is uh, primarily focusing on the visual imagery thing. So that uh, goes on in Instagram. And then you have online media articles. You have all these uh, media outlets uh, uh, like Times of India or the Hindu or uh, education plus there's so many online uh, outlets so they share articles i'm not saying uh, these uh, uh, whatever i mentioned are the sources of fake news but i'm saying online media articles essentially mean that then you have print media so print media i'm not going to focus on today but print media what i mean by that is newspapers uh, magazines and things like that so when i was a kid uh, we didn't have this online uh, uh, platform at all so whatever the uh, fake news uh, came through it was via print media or through rumors by friends talking to other friends and sharing it so uh, our biggest whatsapp we had back then uh, in 1990s uh, was uh, rumors like talking to each other now we have uh, enabled it using technology that's all so print media is oh, i'm sure there are other uh, platforms where misinformation is spread but i'm i have picked up the popular ones okay so now i would like to ask you so you told me, right, you have received a lot of uh, uh, fake news. So from a uh, fake news, from which of these are platforms you have received the fake news? What is the most common source from where you get your face, uh, fake news from?
you can uh, type in the chat box uh, because if I'm, I have to let you talk, I think it will take a lot of time. WhatsApp. Okay, is it the case with everybody? Um, do you have any other sources of WhatsApp? Okay, other than WhatsApp. YouTube. Okay, so I think uh, it's between between YouTube and WhatsApp. And some of you, of course, use Facebook as well. So those of you who are uh, old enough to be using Facebook, I'm sure you have uh, uh, fake news coming from Facebook as well. News articles through Google. Okay, news articles through Google. Instagram also, great. Okay. Okay, I think then I, I, then I think uh, blogs, yes, blogs. Blogs are uh, uh, important. So again, uh, where you search uh, online for blogs. Okay, so I think I've not missed um, uh, major things. I've listed down all of it. So now let us uh, get further. So now, whenever uh, this, this I would like to call is the forward culture. So the moment you come across a fake news, I, I, to be honest, you wouldn't know uh, at the first sight that it is a fake news. But if it is of certain character, you would be tempted to forward it. So I would call it the forward culture. So you, you just can't resist your temptation to forward something that you have received, be it on WhatsApp or Facebook. You just want to share it. You just want to forward it. So what does this forward culture mean? So why are you doing it? So of course, I've uh, been in this science communication where I uh, try to uh, talk science to not just the students, but also to the public. So I've been in this uh, domain for the last seven to eight years. So I've had so many experiences. Uh, uh, so I have been able to understand i've been trying to understand why this forward culture is there so uh, i've listed down seven points uh, i'm sure there must be more but these are the things that i have come across why people forward it so there is an emotional appeal to it so when you read a message uh, i'm going to give you examples by the way but i'm just giving you an overall structure now so when you feel read a message and you feel happy about it you tend to share it or you you feel sad about it you you share you share it so any kind of emotions that if you can associate by reading a message, you will be tempted to forward it. Particularly, for example, pride. If you're proud of some message, by reading a message, you're very proud of it, you'll be tempted to share it. And that is uh, one of the uh, primary reasons. Then you have biases and prejudice. So for those of you who do not understand this word, bias uh, or prejudice is like my own preconceived idea so i would have my own uh, liking or preferences right so i may like a particular topic or i may have a certain uh, beliefs so my those beliefs or uh, those uh, preconceived notions uh, may influence my forwarding culture so if i receive a message that is appealing to my personality or that is appealing to my own beliefs or thought process i will immediately forward it so if i read something that is not appealing to me that is not appealing to me, meaning that that is out, something is out there that is not uh, uh, in line with what I think in my mind, then I would not forward it because it's just not what I want to forward it. So that's a third, that is the second uh, most important point why we forward it. Then you have a crave for attention. So this is something that I always seen in people. So they want to, to share information and to be known uh, uh, among their social circles that this is a person like, you know, who shares interesting things. So I can expect some interesting forwards from this person. I can, ex uh, uh, something like that. So that attention seeking behavior is also out there. Then you have uh, some people are genuinely concerned about sharing valuable information with the social circle. Let's say, uh, particularly during this coronavirus time, there are a lot of forwards out there where uh, some kind of a recipe, uh, if you follow, it will cure the coronavirus or it will help you uh, help your immunity against the coronavirus. So when you receive such messages, you are tempted to forward it to other people, at least with your close social circle, in the intention that it might help them. So sharing valuable information with social circle is one of the uh, important uh, uh, parameter that influences the forwarding culture. Then you have uh, a propaganda, ideological or philosophical, meaning uh, you have you believe in some ideology uh, you believe in certain philosophy and you, when you receive a message uh, that uh, tries to reinforce it or that tries to validate it, you will definitely forward it. You won't uh, bother to check whether that is true or not. The moment it is appealing to you, you will just forward it. And then we all love conspiracies. I think 
we all uh, uh, i'll tell you some of the conspiracies that i uh, used to hear when i was a kid but i'm sure you have your own conspiracies now but which you guys can share me but we all love conspiracies conspiracies are nothing but certain established fact out there and there is a, a certain set of people who would say that that established fact is wrong or there's something uh, uh, hideous going on that something suspicious going on or maybe what is out there is not true such kind of a mindset or attitude to to believe whatever go is going on is not right that kind of an approach we call it conspiracy and i'm sure you've heard of the word conspiracy theories uh, we'll come to that the final uh, uh, thing that i put is what's the harm so you read something you read a message or an article and you find it is uh, you do not know whether it is true or not but still okay what's the harm in me sharing it whether it is true or not it is interesting so as long as it is interesting what is the harm so i can just forward it so these are some of the things that i have come across that uh, uh, based on my experiences why people are tempted uh, to forward a message or an article so i call it the forward culture so so now uh, i i'll directly come to some examples but of course i'm going to uh, collect some examples from your side as well okay but uh, remember i am not there are a lot of types of fake news okay there are political fake news uh, or there is social fake news there are so many kinds of fake news but i am picking up only science based fake news like when i say science fake news what it means is that you uh, come across an article or you come across a message on whatsapp or facebook that claims to be scientific that claims to have some science behind it or that is projected to be true by using science so when it is actually not true such news what i'm calling it a science fake news there could be so many other type of fake news that does not involve science at all okay because uh, let's say for example so and so person person a said so and so thing at a conference in let's say uh, uh, in this workshop so there's nothing science it's just a mere historical uh, inaccuracies or historical accuracies so i'm not going to talk about such fa fake news whether someone said it or not or whether uh, a uh, some conference was held or not or some event happened or not but i'm just going to talk about news or articles or whatsapp forwards messages that only involves science okay but the method that i'm going to teach you in spotting it can be applied to other fake news as well okay since i'm uh, from the domain of science i'm interested in that domain so nothing else so i'm going to share you show you some videos about uh, and also some articles let me come to it so let me see can click on it so uh, before i show, show the videos i'll uh, go into the uh, some of the pictures that i want to share is it uh, opening i'm not sure i think it's opening yeah so uh, i've just give, uh, taken very few examples that i uh, constantly receive from uh, different people so let me take this one for example okay uh before i proceed i would like to know how many of you received this image i mean it's not opening it right oh uh, it's open right yeah how many of you have been receiving this particular picture H have you seen this recently has anybody uh, whatever it is displayed on the screen have you received this okay okay so it has been widely uh, circulated Uh, as the picture of a solar eclipse that was taken from an airplane okay the, uh, all of you know uh, uh, there was an eclipse in on june 21 recently about couple of months ago that was visible from india so and also across uh, different parts of the world so this picture was widely circulated uh, saying that it was clicked from one of the planes and you can see another plane in the picture as well so there are multiple reasons why this is false Uh, one is because the size of the sun and moon is grossly mis misinterpreted like uh, the actual image that you see of the uh, the moon and the sun in the picture is actually taken from nasa website that is true the picture that you've seen has been digitally manipulated and it's been uh, pulled out from nasa website but it has been placed on another it's been photoshopped literally okay while the image of the sun and the corona what you see uh, is true but it's been photoshopped and it's been digitally Uh, imprinted on another image, superimposed on another image. So now, again, this this is a kind of fake news that is of no big harm, right? 
look this is a very interesting uh, uh, picture to observe it looks very beautiful so anybody who's interested in visual appeals they will forward this okay they would not go out to verify whether this information is true or was this actually taken by an a uh, pilot and so many other things they would not bother to check but still it is fake news okay this is the kind of fake news that does not do much harm i mean when i say it does not do much harm it does do a certain level of harm which i'll talk about it in the last few slides but in principle it is not going to affect your health for for example by for forwarding it you are not going to create a chaos in the society by forwarding this you are not going to uh, create some emergency kind of situation in the society so there is there is some level of lesser consequence because of such a forward but still it is fake news let me show you another example uh is it escaping hopefully it is okay yeah so there is another uh, similar kind of okay so this is uh, have you guys seen this image i don't know uh if you have come across this image okay this picture was widely shared i mean uh, it was shared like a million times or so across various forums where uh, it claimed that the moon and the sun are on the same side of the sky you can look at this uh, some of you may immediately say this is wrong because the moon is enormously big so moon and the sun are of the same size from our point of view of course in reality they are of uh, different size but in from our point of view sitting here on earth when you look at the sky both appear to be the same size so this picture where you claim to have the sun and the moon it is like grossly wrong but still people who receive these images in whatsapp they are like wow what a beautiful picture i think i should forward it okay again this is a kind of picture which is not going to cause much harm but again it is feeding in misinformation sun and moon are not like this you don't have to exaggerate or uh, manipulate the sun and the moon to make it look appealing the way they are already is appealing the only reason is people have not looked up enough so that is uh, since i am into astronomy i i get a lot of such messages so i'm sharing with you guys on that so next i i have a lot of examples let me show you so there was this one uh, i do not know if you received this message um the first photograph of earth sent by chandrayaan 2 so Uh, i've not been able to download the images because it, it's been sent long ago uh, any of you received this message yes so in this message if you see the earth is surrounded by clouds i think you can see it uh, vaguely you have earth and there is a lot of cloud around the earth so that was claimed to be the clouds captured by chandrayaan 2 first of all chandrayaan 2 did not capture images and also it does not have high resolution cameras that is good enough to capture this picture and it was not intended to uh, take the picture of the earth okay so this is again a, a, a fake uh, message okay okay but again it was very widely forwarded i'll come to the next uh few images wait uh It is uh, my network is a bit slow. Um, I think that is why it's just the pink snake trying to eat on its own tail. It's moving around. Okay. Okay. So this is again another harmless uh, fake news. So there has been. Um, I hope uh, you have uh, come across this one where they've reported to see uh, two suns. uh one is the uh, one where two bright spots in the sky one is the sun other is the moon where moon also was shining as bright as the sun so this was again widely forwarded so this can never happen okay but again uh, uh i receive all these messages but still uh we're trying to fight it and this is one of the common messages that your parents or like it has been going around for a long a long time like several years this one that you're seeing it on the screen So when I get twelve thirty to three thirty, make sure to turn off your mobile, tablet, blah blah blah, and you have very high radiations coming uh, close to Earth. Have you guys come across this? Yes. So this again is an absolute fake message. That's nothing. So if you clearly observe this message, look at that. They have used some of the words 
that will tempt you to believe it okay let me tell you a few examples they are using some highly technical terms like high radiation cosmic rays okay then you are using uh, credible media sources for example nasa google bbc news look they are trying to use these words and wording it into their message so they will actually tempt you to believe it because the moment you read it oh nasa it has come from nasa it has come from bbc news and there seems to be some cosmic rays some scientific terms so whenever you you get a mixture of these words and when you look at it you tempt you are like like tempted to believe it wow it must be true but no one would actually bother to go and check the nasa website or the bbc website all you want to do is once it appeals to you remember the word i told you the forward culture you just immediately forward it again uh, this is not a a harmful message meaning like by sending it you're not going to damage anything but of course it has has its own harm but i'll come to some other kind of news that can actually cause harm okay uh, next i'm going to show you some of the messages okay can you guys see this uh, i i zoom in uh yeah so this is a typical forward that we uh, get to uh, get during the corona virus time so taiwan experts you, you i i think you guys can read it so it, it says here take a deep breath and hold your breath for more than 10 seconds if you complete it successfully without discomfort stiffness there is no then you it means that you have no infection do you do you guys uh, like when you read it do you guys believe that this is true like what is your first uh, sign when you read that line but still being forwarded you guys are able to see it is wrong it is completely false but still people forward it and it is not just that you just keep reading it uh they use this word looks excellent advice they use this word japanese doctors and you everyone should ensure your mouth and throat is moist never dry take a sip of water every 15 minutes at least you see this reasoning even if the virus gets into your mouth drinking water or other liquids will wash them down through your esophagus and into the stomach once there is there in tummy your stomach acid will kill all the virus there has been absolutely no more false information than this the stomach acid cannot kill virus it does not kill virus the virus does not spread through your body like that okay if you drink enough water more regularly the virus can enter your windpipes and into the lungs and that's very dangerous okay so now this is a kind of forward that might actually harm you okay look this this at, at the outset it might look like okay it's just another forward uh, it is good intention like people may have forwarded it with good intention because you see here please send and share with family friends and everyone about this take care everyone and may the world recover from the coronavirus so the intention of this message seems to have been nice like you know social well remember one of the uh, uh, parameters that i told you so with a good intention people want to share this but the problem is the information is wrong it's scientifically wrong so what if people follow this and they still get infected so we cannot in the name of taking care of or sending a positive message we cannot afford to share fake information not everybody will be like would have uh, uh, had the privilege to go to school or would have had the privilege to have a parents or people around you who can tell you it's actually wrong there are a lot of people out there who can actually believe this literally so when you have them let's say people are able to hold their breath for 10 seconds so even if they are infected let's say someone is actually infected with coronavirus and they are able to hold their breath for 10 seconds they will assume they are not infected so a lot of studies have shown that until it is really serious you won't even have any breathing difficulty till your like uh, till the virus is intruded like it has grown in lot of proportions within your body so that is absolute it can, it can actually harm the person by not taking precautions or not by preventing him to take the test or going to the doctor so these kind of forwards which are like plentiful during this corona virus time can actually harm but now uh, again the intention may have been good but the fact the factually it is wrong and the consequences can be life threatening with such forwards okay and i'm going to share you more information just give me uh just give me a moment guys uh, i'm i'm switching my wifi to another network this seems to be slightly slow just give me a moment
yes uh, am i audible now am i audible now okay yes yes thank you thank you if you guys have any questions you can type in the chat box i'll try to answer them later as well okay so now let me take another example okay here uh, is another forward again with, since uh, it's a corona virus time a lot of forwards i received uh, uh, in these formats so it starts with you no know, the the message starts with a attention grabbing words most urgent very serious important information when you read these words you are automatically like your attention comes to that okay it seems to be a very serious message so that is how the words can play a role in at getting your attention then they say ministry of health health emergency notification to the public that the corona influenza out, outbreak this time is very very serious and fatal okay and then this is before like this in the month of march okay um then you have here drink warm water and they have helped uh, saying this and they saying vitamin c and uh, they have some symptoms children are prone repeated high fever look this is a kind of message where some of the information may look correct for example a uh, fever of course a uh, uh, having fever in the symptomatic patients people who have symptoms fever is definitely a symptom there is no doubt about it but just because the fever is mentioned as one of the symptoms the, is it necessary that all the symptoms that they have mentioned true no not necessarily and also they asking you to drink water like 50 to 80 uh, milliliters of water warm water so it it tells that it will prevent you from getting infected again all these things uh, one way of looking at is by following these instructions you are not going to lose anything correct uh this is the what's the harm type of message okay uh it, also in the previous message by doing these things by having water regularly or uh, taking care of your food habits or having vitamin c this is not going to harm your health in any way okay it's going to keep your body good only but the claim is that it is going to cure the corona virus or help you stop getting infected now that is where it is wrong so now here they come up with a set of instruction that is generally good for your health Are somehow connecting it to coronavirus and the uh, curing for that. So that is where you know, on one note, though you would not have any uh, uh, side effects by drinking water. Of course, it's good for your health. But believing that it is going to help you against coronavirus, it's definitely wrong. And that is where the danger part of this message comes from. Okay. Um, I have a lot of uh, such information, but I'm not sure if I can share all of them. yeah so here is another message but I, i i would like to draw you to this particular point if the virus is exposed to a temperature of 26 to 27 degrees celsius it will be killed it's absolutely wrong the virus gets killed only at temperature 60 degrees celsius or above okay which is way beyond the temperature humans can handle 60 70 degrees celsius and above and 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 directly exposing the virus at 26 to 27 degrees celsius the virus will flourish it's nothing's going to happen to it okay look and staying stay away from ice cream and eating cold it is definitely not the case the virus doesn't care whether you're eating an ice cream or not if you are exposed to it you will get infected so this kind of messages are plentiful i'm actually i'm showing you only about 20% of what i have received okay um okay so i will show you one more uh again so this is one of my students who asked me uh is it true that the moon is not an artificial satellite and space object put in to orbit like that is uh, put by the humans i have heard the dark side of the moon is placed to uh, some secret military bases on other extraterrestrial objects so this falls under the conspiracy theory format so whenever you uh, receive an, a message that says the moon on the, the dark side of the moon is uh, invaded by aliens or it is invaded by secret military people uh, doing some experiments so you love that you are uh, we by default love such conspiracies so but again uh, no matter how tempting the conspiracies are if it, there is no evidence to it that is definitely not the truth so this is my reply uh, of course i'm not explaining them but i'm just saying these are the kinds of messages that you are again this is uh, a harmless message but still i'll come to that harmless part later what's the harm type of category and conspiracy um then i don't think uh, okay this is another uh, interesting uh, image 
uh, that maybe your parents might be aware of uh, but i'm not sure have you guys come across this in any of your if if your, if there are parents you you can tell if you come across this where okay i can zoom so this uh, is the claim of uh, five temples in india being on a straight line uh, five shiva temples i think so that there, there was a claim that you know if you there are five temples in our country which fall on the same line across the country okay have uh, none of you have heard it okay that is quite surprising but maybe uh, adults some of the parents may have received it so the claim is claim is that uh, there are five temples that uh, our ancestors or the people in the ancient time have built in specific locations where if you connect them uh, if you connect all those temples they form a straight line so now this is being projected as okay look our ancestors were so brilliant uh, they they did not have any gps or of course they didn't have gps so that without the help of any gps things or any technology they were able to build five temples in a straight line okay does it sound convincing uh, is my voice breaking oh my goodness i'm sorry uh, am i audible uh yes clear the loud and clear oh okay okay so now now here is the thing here is what you can do to manipulate people believing into anything that you want them to so now there must be thousands and thousands of temples across the country right there should be thousands of temples so if i actually have to plot all the temples using a dot i can that could be temple here temple here so literally the entire map of india would be filled with dots when i say dot just to represent a temple okay and imagine i i fill this entire uh, I, i think i can draw over this right can i draw over this white board wait uh kavya can i draw over this uh, thing uh no no i don't think we can draw okay so if i was able to draw i would have shown so okay so if you were to make a point like dots for every temple in our country you would get thousands of dots imagine i randomly draw a line i randomly draw a line across the country do you think at least 10 to 20 or hundreds of points will fall on that line look there's going to be the entire india map is going to be filled with hundreds and thousands of points because i'm going to point mark for every temple okay and i randomly draw a line across the country do you think uh, at least 20 30 of them will fall on that line the dots do you understand my question it's a simple logic right some temple if you draw a straight line across the entire country it is very likely that some temple will fall in it some of the temples will definitely fall into it and also remember okay my uh, i think one of you was asking uh, me to repeat the question so the claim is this this picture is one of the uh, forward messages that we received where it claims that there are look uh, there are a uh, points marked here you see uh, this point where i'm pointing the arrow this point this point and this kedarnath point and this uh, uh, kaleshwaram uh, telangana all these are five to six temples that is claimed to fall on the same straight line the claim is our ancestors without having the knowledge of gps or any sort of technology that is not knowing the latitude and longitude of the place they were able to construct temples that exactly fall in a straight line that is the claim okay so now here is the point it is so easy to like draw a straight line and make number of temples fall under it or any any uh, a monument for that matter can fall under it because there are literally thousands of temple temples in our country and for every temple you can you, if you mark a point you you can like have thousands of dots on the screen right now on the map and if you draw a line randomly across the country you will at least have 30 40 temples falling across it uh, on the line so the claim is like it falls flat on the face that what it's been constructed keeping that in mind and also these five temples chosen on what background and why why were these five temples chosen or whatever uh, the places of worship chosen among the thousands you could have chosen any other five temples or in fact all these five temples are not the biggest temples in the in, in our country they're like they're, some of the temples are very small there are some very famous and popular temples that are not even on the straight line that are in 
Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Gujarat, they're spread over, but they're not on this line because it, those dots do not fit into this narrative that it falls on a straight line. Because if you included all those dots also, then you cannot create a fake message. Look, what is the ingredient of a fake message it has to look be believable. So you have to ignore all the points or the data that will not fit your fake news narrative. So you will include the points that will only fit your fake news narrative. So this is a very clear example. Also, there's another thing. You're drawing a straight line, right? How thick is the straight line going to be? If I, if I imagine uh, this is a, just a map, right? I can zoom in and zoom out. The map, I have the control of zooming in the map or zooming out the map. If I zoom out sufficiently, the entire India will become so small that if I draw one line, the entire India will fall under that line. Correct. If I zoom out sufficiently. And also on the contrary, if I zoom in, if I keep zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, even these points that you see on this temp, like this point, this point, this point, they will spread out. They will no longer be connected by a straight line if you zoom in sufficiently. So it is only at a particular zoom level and particularly thick line. If you draw the red line to be very thick, you will make all those temples fall in line. Again, uh, I'm just asking you to think whenever you receive such a message, ask yourself, okay, can this be true? Can something else be going on here? So that is what I would like to say here. Again, it is a harmless message, but the point is, can you guys connect to what category does it fall under? Remember I have seven points I uh, told you about uh, in the first, what category does, does it? No, I gave you seven points like emotional appeal and you have What's the harm? Like I, I gave you seven points. I do not know if you guys remember, but let me. Okay, I, I'll show it to you later. You guys can tell me what category it falls under. Okay, now here is an interesting uh, uh, video that I wanted to show you. Before that, I'll show you this message. How many of you have heard of this? Uh, there is a cylindrical uh, uh, rod like a thing. We call it Ulakai that was supposedly standing during the eclipse. Uh, during the eclipse, it was standing upright. And once the eclipse was over, it... <coughs> Sorry about it. Once the eclipse was over, over that, uh, the rod fell to the ground. Uh, okay, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. This is again, a classic example of a fake news being forwarded. Okay, again, uh, again, when you come across such messages, uh, did you guys believe it or not? Like, how, let us be honest here. Did you guys think it's act, it was actually true? Did you guys actually think it was true? I would like an honest answer. Did you guys think it was true? Okay. Okay, so here is the thing. So some of you actually believed this to be true. So when you are believing some message, there should have been some thought process gone into your mind, right? Okay. Uh, there should have been some appealing part of it, or maybe uh, uh, what? Okay, those who said yes. So why did you think it was true? Like it is because uh, uh, people who said it, or it, because you heard it from a reliable person. On how did you come to believe it? We saw it practically. Are you sure you saw it practically? Vaishnavi is saying you saw it practically. Okay, so here is the point. So some of you claim to have seen it actually practically. So the thing is this, Ulakai, which is a cylindrical rod that you have, can stand on any flat surface for hours and hours together. You can try it out. And whenever you do an experiment or whenever you receive a, a forward like this, you should ask yourself, well, can, it try, can I try it myself? Okay, you can try it. Of course, you can try it. Of course, eclipses are not common to come by, but you have lunar eclipses that are very common. Solar eclipses also, or once in a year, you do get it. So now, what are the factors that affect whether the ulakai, that the cylindrical rod is standing or not? Now, that is how you should think. Okay, there could be wind. Wind is a parameter that can affect whether the ulakai is standing steady or not, or the surface on which it is resting, the, the how smooth is the surface. That can be a factor whether it is uh, going to be standing for hours and hours or not. So there's so many factors, uh, particularly these two main factors that can affect whether the Olake is standing or not. So now we have tried it and a lot of people have tried it. 
and yes it has happened in madurai people have reported it to be observing it from so many other uh, places as well but the fact is it is not true and the reason that they say uh, people who claim this to be true is because the moon sun and the earth aligns in a straight line so that there, there is more gravity so because there is more gravity it is standing uh, upright so once the eclipse moves out the gravity reduces and the ulake falls so whenever you hear of this technical terms like gravity the the planets are lining up the gravity is going to be more so it makes it more believable but the fact is the gravity does not affect the way ulakais fall at all and you don't have to uh, like uh, 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 okay just because i'm saying you don't have to work into it you can try it yourself next time but when you try an experiment here is the key part you should not have your own biases or prejudices you should not have any expectation out of the experiment like you want it to fall because that is that what i'm trying to say you should not manipulate or like uh, cheat on doing the experiment a lot of people have done it just to uh, spread the fake news but if you honest about the experiment you will find for yourself that if if there is no wind and if it is on a flat surface whether there is eclipse or not it is going to stand there for hours and hours together without falling and the only way it can fall is a wind blows and uh, uh, fall, makes it fall over or you pushing it off or the surface is uh, uh, kind of rough so even a small amount of wind can throw it out of stability and it can fall the eclipse has absolutely no role in uh, making the ulake fall okay so that is about uh, uh, this particular again this is a kind of thing that is harmless but again there is a harm which i'll come uh, to talk about in the last few slides so this is some uh, one of the popular thing and and i think i have a video of it also just give me a moment i think i can have a video i can play it up where i have come across one video can you guys see the video oops i i'm not able to play the video oops okay give me a moment i think i have a okay i've stopped sharing it oops wait sorry sorry guys i'm just going back uh, to it's loading okay uh here is that video yeah i'll take you to the video i think uh, most of you uh, my may be referring to this particular video about this ulakai odayam color setayum matching border vetiyum to buy yeah mattum vidhiragar maavattam saathiyai adutha thaayil patti gramathil tharayil ulakai endirka vaitu paarambariya murai padi suriya grahanathai podumakkal valipaadu seindhana தமிழகத்தின் பல்வேறு இடங்களில் தாம் இணையத்தில் பரவி பதினெட்டு ஆகிறது okay i think uh, you guys have seen this video were you able to see this video now i mean oops 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 i think i closed uh... yeah yes so uh uh yes uh, so this a uh, a uh, video was uh, shared widely i received from at least 20 to 25 people have forwarded with me this video but the fact is when you see such video this video is not an evidence remember 
videos are not evidence audios are not evidence whatsapp messages are not evidences for a scientific fact so this under what conditions were, was this uh, experiment performed this video is a very narrow video which, which is no clear of uh, 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 happenings of telling us what was happening uh, around it and what who were the people involved what was the parameter checked what was it under the ideal condition was this checked so it's just so many questions that are unanswered in this video and if you can try this experiment your, yourself you will find it very clearly you don't even have to uh, uh, understand it scientifically or you don't even have to understand science behind it or concepts behind it all you have to do is do this experiment for yourself and see the result itself is false the result itself is that the olakai or the cylindrical rod is not affected by uh, or, or the eclipse event so this is uh, i just don't want to take a lot of time i'll tell you another uh, uh, example uh, again i'm I, i'm sorry i have to share uh, uh, a website here i hope you guys are able to see it i think it's opening okay this is again a very popular website i'm sure all of you know it uh here the claim is this uh the spiritual significance of being at 11 degree okay by the way i am from coimbatore okay uh i am from coimbatore uh, which is uh, yeah we'll come to the tabi manu we'll come to that video later um let me just take to some of the other kind of fake news that we uh, quite actively forward so this is a a, a claim like uh, we are from coimbatore which is at 11 degree so there is this place uh, a certain per, uh, a person who is claiming that it is <coughs> a very very sacred place coimbatore is apparently a uh, such a sacred place because 11 degree you can see here i'm highlighting 11 degrees the most important thing so 11 degrees is the latitude of our place coimbatore so because 11 degree is so important and this uh, place is located in this city so a lot of things is being claimed about it like you say uh, you see anything that spins create a certain force which is called the centrifugal force and it is happening in so many ways one of the common experience that people may have exposed to particularly in coimbatore is centrifugal pumps now here it is look coimbatore is known for centrifugal pumps no doubt about it but he's try that is completely an irrelevant information when you want to claim that 11 degree is a special spot look coimbatore is famous for centrifugal pumps because of the business reasons so now he's trying to connect the earth is spinning and it's creating a centrifugal force that is why Coimbatore is famous for centrifugal pumps. Look, the moment you start asking questions and use your brains a little, you will know this is like hogwash. Like there is the seemingly disconnected things that he's trying to say, but somehow here and there technical terms are used like 11 degree, planet spinning, centrifugal force. Coimbatore is famous for centrifugal pumps. So Coimbatore is famous. So now this is a very clear example of pride. Okay, any Coimbatore person. If I'm from Coimbatore, if I read such a news, I'll be very happy. Wow, Coimbatore is so special. Oh, Coimbatore is known for yes, Coimbatore is known for centrifugal pumps. So, so I, my own mind and biases, my own pride about my city has blocked me further going into whether this is true or not. So this is where I say. So what is the tempting factor? The forward culture, these emotional appeals. The let me tell you, when you want to find the truth or a fact the biggest enemy is your own emotions so your emotions can hide the actual truth and emotions can tempt you to forward things that is like complete hogwash this is one such an example again uh, there are uh, quite a few things that i can tell about this uh, but i just want to point you to one yes here at 11 degrees when the planet is spinning you are dead vertical. Your energies are shooting straight up because of the centrifugal force. If you did manage to keep your head straight and sit, it's naturally being pushed up at this place. There are any number of places along the 11 degrees across this planet, but not everywhere have the focus, the necessary energy and intention being created. So now this is where it's completely unscientific. Okay, look, there are people across the world, the planet is spinning everywhere. And everywhere, if this is true, everywhere people should be getting this energy up, whatever is being claimed. And moreover, 
the do you know uh, that planets uh, spins at a certain speed do you guys know that our planet spins at a certain speed do you guys know the speed also uh, anybody uh, uh, know how fast our planet is spinning okay i can tell you i'll just uh, tell you again it's at about 1600 kilometers per hour roughly okay 1600 to 700 kilometers per hour at equator okay our planet spins the fastest at equator and as you can imagine logically also as you go up, away from the equator the planet spins slower and slower if you're at the poles like north pole and south pole the planet hardly spins because you know you're at the pole so you don't spin at all but at the equator is the maximum speed of spin so if at all what is being claimed the centrifugal force it will be maximum at the equator not at 11 degree at 11 degree it's going to be lesser than at equator so equator would be the ideal place for him to choose so now this is well if you like uh, or if you have take a small piece of paper and work out it mathematically and uh, uh, introduce a little bit of science you will know this is complete hogwash but still this is very famous this blog has been read this uh, particular article has been read by several thousands of people and it's being forwarded why despite this being unscientific you know why simple emotional appeal so now this is something i want all of you kids and adults alike do not let emotions get in your way do not get your own biases get in your way when you're trying to uh, look at a fact or a truth okay so I, i if this was true i would have been happy because i'm from coimbatore but again uh yes uh okay so now this is a very clear example that i wanted to share with you guys but let me close this now but i'm not able to just give me a minute yes yeah um i don't want to take a lot of uh, oh there was another interesting uh, thing that i wanted to share but somehow missed to share Stupid. okay did you guys uh, uh, hear of any news like the eclipse is going to kill the virus sort of a news i don't know if you guys heard of it but um, right anyway i don't think i have time i also have to let you guys ask questions so let me move on there are so many other things like you know when we were young i'm not uh, i'm skipping up uh, skipping these points 3 and point 5 for lack of time so there is this uh, when we were young there is this moon landing conspiracy like you know the entire moon moon landing was fake and people did not actually go to the moon and i'm sure uh, bermuda triangle is something popular even today but the bermuda triangle a uh, conspiracy was there right from when i was kid in 1990 91 92 so all these things are fake so there is nothing uh, special about bermuda triangle or nothing uh, special about uh, like people faking the moon landing we have very much gone but again these are some of the examples that we can come across okay uh now i have to okay so now this is the kind of message that you will get on a whatsapp message or a uh, facebook generally you get you so but there is another kind of uh, uh, thing that is very important for you guys to understand so now this is a title i've given eat chocolate to lose weight okay this weight what was added by me just just to uh, uh, give a sign of excla- exclamation so now i'll take you to this as you can read i fooled millions into thinking chocolate helps weight reduction okay i'm just going to go into this uh, website because these are the kind of news that uh, you guys will uh, encounter very frequently so i i fool millions into thinking chocolate helps weight loss okay now uh, i can share this link with you you can um, go on in detail to read about how how he was able to uh, completely you know uh, right from the scratch he was able to create an entire a uh, fake news around chocolate eating so now here i'll tell you uh, okay so his name is john uh, he's got a phd uh, but his name is john and actually he is a journalist okay he has a phd but he's in molecular biology but has claimed to have a phd in nutrition and diet so now if you you can read through i i'll share the link with you guys but i'm just going to the important part of this uh, 
just okay just uh, give me that okay here is it so whenever you want to uh, come up with some uh, scientific facts it normally comes from the scientist right who who are the ones who are, uh, are making discoveries in in the field of science or coming up with new facts it is a scientist so scientists uh, how do they come up with uh, a result a scientific result they do experiments so there are a lot of scientists across the world even as we speak now they are doing a lot of science experiments and at the end of the experiments if the result is convincing and if they, there is a certain process and if you fulfill it they will publish their results okay they will publish their results into a journal so those journals are where we normally look for whether the information is true or not so whether a, a scientific study has been published in a journal so now this guy particular guy was trying to manipulate a study he wanted to uh, publish an article a fake article in a journal saying that eating chocolate will lead to weight loss okay and this is how he's done it so uh let me yeah he he this particular paragraph uh, if you read it so he has uh, done the experiment and he's got a scientific breakthrough he's got a very beautiful result what is that result weight loss can be done by eating chocolate so it was time to share our scientific breakthrough with the world we needed to get our study published but since it was such a bad science we needed to skip peer review altogether i'll come to uh, what is peer reviewing later but it is basically a step involved in publishing that will uh, uh, easily be a filter to eliminate such bad news okay bad science articles so if you skip that step you will still be able to publish your result so conveniently there are list of fake journal publishers okay uh, since the time was tight i simultaneously submitted our paper chocolate with high cocoa content as a weight loss accelerator this was a title of his paper he submitted his paper to 20 journals remember i told you journals are the people who will publish the paper at the end uh, whatever the scientist come out with so then we crossed our fingers and waited so our paper was accepted for publication by multiple journals within 24 hours needless to say we faced no peer review at all like i told you peer review is a process a very important process in publishing a science story that will be checked by different scientists across the world whether the article is actually true or not okay so a lot of good journals if if a journal is really good if it is a scientific journal they will have this peer review process so but there are a lot of journals out there who do not do this peer review process at all so now one such a journal has a lot of journals actually has accepted his paper without checking for any peer review just accepted the paper and that a uh, 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 journal was the international archives of medicine it is one such a journal that has accepted his uh, uh, paper the international archives of medicine so it is used to be run by uh, biomed central and and blah blah there so many. so now look at this the publisher's ceo called his work the uh, person's work as an outstanding manuscript and just for 600 euros it could be accepted directly in our premier journal so this is business so this particular journal the international archive of medicine is willing to publish the result of that fake article just for 600 euros okay so now these journals with the primary motive of earning money they have just accepted no peer review nothing no checking whether the experiment was true no checking whether it was actually a uh, done with uh, uh, the right parameters just if you are paying a 600 euros you will get it uh, published in our journal okay so this is again how uh, it panned out and it was actually published and it says uh, you no know, although the editor claims that it was done in a reviewed and said it normally look here is the key our paper was published less than 2 weeks after the payment was made once the 600 euros was charged right after that two, in 2 weeks time the paper was published do you know how long it takes for a actual paper with peer review process to get published some of them take years i would say at least 8 months to 10 months because it a peer review process where you submit your article to different scientists in the field and from other domains where all they all check how 
through is your article and they will come back to you with a lot of questions so it is not easy to actually publish your article in a reputed journal but there are these journals who can publish your article for money so now here is where it gets very interesting so now these guys have published it right okay now once they have published all these uh, how does the information come to you guys it is through the media so when i say media uh, it could be online uh, uh, media outlets like the hindu times of india so, so many online so they will have journalist okay and they'll have journalists for different domains so they also have for science you call them science journalist so those science journalists will keep watching these journals like different journals from across different domains so they will look for some articles that can be pulled out and they will put it in their newspaper and put it out for public to read okay so now if you see uh, just uh, these are the some of the uh, newspapers that published it that daily star again you have this uh, the huffington post it's a very famous uh, uh, online news platform huffington post i'm sure uh, some of you may have heard of it you see excellent news chocolate can help you lose weight so these news have actually come out in top news media huffington post and you have uh, uh, daily star and in fact even in our india times of now has reported it uh, i do not know if the article is there you see some of the here he's written uh those who eat chocolate stay slim without contacting me at all soon we were in the daily star iris examiner cosmopolitan times of india okay uh, i i tried checking the article but it says it has been removed okay and they have a uh, huffington site so i can click that also i can show you this is just to uh, tell you whatever you are reading on the internet you have to be very very careful about the sources so now they have updated now this is the link that i'm i clicked chocolate weight loss studies authors reveal report was fake now it has been updated so now uh, the updated news is here but now they have previously a new research has revealed that chocolate can add weight loss when combined with low carb diet so now they have added uh, after all this has been revealed by the author to be fake now they have updated it uh while these guys are doing this uh the times of india has removed the page uh the times of india you no longer find that article so uh, but of course before it was removed you see uh it has come under lifestyle health fitness diet need a sweeter day to lose weight eat chocolates so this was a title under which the article was already released by times of india and mind it times of india is read by millions of people and now if such a news can be published in an article by such reputed people now imagine what you're reading online and this is a, a deliberate attempt by uh, uh, this author to to just to prove a point how easy it is to send fake science news and the journalists who are hungry for some kind of sensationalism or some kind of news for their own trp they can easily put it out okay so now uh, i understand this is all like uh, really scary and we need to be very careful about it but what do we do about it so i'll uh, share one more uh, article around it again this is the just the link uh, by the way this is the uh, uh, the journal okay so this is the journal uh, this is uh, the journal international archives of medicine in which this article was published but now they have uh, removed it uh, from this uh, uh article from this website they have removed the article after uh, author himself revealed that it was fake now such journals are called fake journals or you can also call them predatory journals which i'll come to it in a, in a minute so how do you differentiate between which journal to trust and which journal not to trust so this is one of that bad journals where you should not be looking out for any uh, uh science content for so now let me go to the next So now this is another interesting. You guys are able to see it, right? So this is another um, uh, interesting article. So superhero night vision for humans. Okay. So now uh, let me show you the article that had come in the daily 
daily mail daily mail is again a very popular uh, uh, news portal i'm sure uh, any of you heard of this daily mail.co that uk it's uh, uh, from united kingdom but it's very popular okay so uh, since it is already 8 o'clock i'm going to end it in about uh, 15 minutes i'm sorry this uh, uh, is taking some time that's why 8:15 i'll end it then i will have 15 minutes of online uh, your questions which i can answer 8:30 we'll end the session i'm sorry about it uh, this is such a topic it takes time so i do not know if it is visible to us oops i said hello oh my god Okay, so here is the um, the headline. Could we soon have superhero night vision? Brain implants could give us a sixth sense by making us see infrared. Okay, this is a very sensational news. Like you know, for what they are essentially claiming is like by by doing certain things to our brains, by having certain things implanted in our brains, it can give us a sixth sense, meaning. Uh, it will help us see infrared. Normally, our eyes cannot see infrared. Our eyes can see only with GR color, right? Your, your, you know of the optical part of the spectrum that we can see with GR, violet, indigo, red, yellow, orange, uh, a blue, yellow, orange, red. So that part is the only part that is visible to our eye. So what they are claiming is, this brain implant could give us a, an additional sense by making us see the infrared also. So now this is the claim made by a very famous. a uh, news portal but this news is wrong this is completely wrong now uh, of course this is uh, written by a journalist like you say richard gray for mail online so this story is written by a not by a scientist but by a science journalist or some journalist so he would have gotten his information from somewhere right so where did he get his information from okay so now this is where he got his information from so now i'm taking you to the actual a uh, journal where this was published okay this is called the journal of neuroscience so this journal of neuroscience uh, has has this article published look embedding a panoramic representation of infrared light in adult rat uh, some technical term somatosensory cortex through a sensory neuroprothesis so now this is a technical i'm sure uh, even i don't understand what this uh, line means it's highly technical but this is the article that was published in the journal of neuroscience do you think it says anything about night vision for uh, humans does it say anywhere in the title the actual article okay it doesn't say anything it just says they did some experiment with rats and they have some results with experimenting on rats there is no mention about uh, uh, that it was tried on humans or humans could get this or that nothing and by the way the journal of neuroscience is a peer reviewed journal okay it is one of those good journals okay now even from a very good journal just because the journalism is poor just because the journalist is poor he can misinterpret it so now here i typed in the points what the journal actually says okay what it says is uh, you can actually implant them with a brain device to teach the rats to identify the location of infrared light sources surprisingly the implanted rats learned to do so in less than 4 days okay the scientists who conducted the research suggested their findings could have important implications or applications in basic neuroscience or rehabilitative medicine this point number 3 and 4 the point number 3 and 4 is what has been said by the scientist who conducted the experiment but the point number 5 blow it out of proportions extrapolate and sensationalize that is what was done by this daily mail guy so now you should be very very careful about what you read on the internet so even though it is a very famous portal like times of india or daily mail you have to check whether the information that i read is actually good or not or true or not no, not good or not but true or not now here i again i have a lot of examples but i unfortunately don't have the time so now uh, let me take you to how do you do it now now i told you what is the problem with the fake news and so many other things but how can you tie through this so that is my okay so before i uh, get into uh, uh, the forward culture or, or or how you spot the fake news what is the origin of a fake news like you know like you are not the guys who are creating the fake news right 
obviously uh, you are not the ones who are creating a sensationalizing news you are merely in the middle for forwarding it you guys are in the step where you forward the news you don't create the news so now we have to also look at what is the origin of such fake news so if you trace it back it is always uh, to do with political and financial reasons like misinformation spread with deliberate intent to fool confuse or appeal to people for gains it could either be money or power so the ultimately the intention of a fake news is to exploit you in terms of either the party who is exploiting you to for him to have money or power okay media why should media do this because they get tier creating so more people will read so imagine you find a news like sixth sense for humans wouldn't you be tempted to hit on the article and read it so tier creating at the end of the day again it will lead to more ads for the news uh, uh, media and they will get more money so again uh, that is a result of poor journalism so media sensationalism will lead to poor uh, journalism which is uh, high tier creating money again now you have a researcher who is uh, doing a research and you have a poor irresponsible science journalist this is not just for science journalist for any journalist since i am talking about science fake news i am using the word science but in general anybody who is trying to bring in the information if they are irresponsible or poor that will be disseminated to the public so this is the origin of such fake news and also rather the intention okay now let me go to the next slide okay so now that you have this misinformation what information do you have about the information so the entire online sp space is cluttered with fake news what can you do to prevent yourself i i call this a pandemic because it is uh, i would say this is spreading faster than the corona virus uh, at least the corona virus has a, a certain pra pattern and limitation in its spread but this uh, fake news spreading is like wildfire it just has no pattern and it can spread instantly so how can you uh, prevent yourself from being infected and also help reduce the spread of it okay so now the first step is before you hit that forward button just hold on for a moment just hold on don't just immediately hit each time when you see that forward button that icon just pause for a moment and let us address few questions that hit the first question does the article or the forward message that you receive actually cite the source when i say cite the source where are they getting the information from for example remember i sh uh, showed you the uh, uh, whatsapp message on uh, the corona virus like uh, drinking the killing the virus killing virus virus gets killed at 26 to 27 degrees celsius it was merely in the message they didn't have any article or paper or a link where you can go check click on it and check so very first thing you have to be suspicious about do they have the source of information because only if they cite the source can you actually click on the source to check whether the information is true so in this case daily or daily mail okay so someone let's say uh, eating chocolate will help you reduce the weight uh, help you reduce your weight and to give a, a article they are citing the daily mail article itself in the source so now you go inside the daily mail article and you see they have kept. so just because it is on the daily mail do you think it is true it is not true so now we have to check does the daily mail article does it cite a source the original source remember i showed you the journal of neuroscience that article does the daily mail article cite the source as the original so you have to check for the source that is very important first step before you hit on the forward button okay now second is the source direct i mean the, i i think i explained the second point directly is the source direct direct meaning what i told you the, the journal of neuroscience is the source directly taking you to the uh, uh, journal website where the research article is there or indirect like the daily uh, mail.co.uk so that website so now the third important point who is the author of the information okay uh, or which journal is the article information published okay so because the author is very important because once you know the name of the author once you know okay uh, my voice is breaking okay a lot of people are saying it's breaking breaking okay so a lot of people have been wanting me to know when that is going to end it is going to end by 8:15 i'm going to stop uh, this is the last slide for all practical purposes this is the last slide 
and then i'll be uh, opening up for the questions okay yes and is my voice audible now a lot of you have complained that it is not audible am i better now okay thank you so now who is the author author plays a very important role you will have to once you uh, uh, have the author's name you can actually go back and check whether the author is a credible author what has he done before is he in a reputed is he from a reputed institute like let's say in the institute of science or iit madras so wh what is the author's position so that is very important information or in which journal is the article or information published so now here is the most important part i want you to tell remember i talked talked about two kind of journals one is the predatory journals which are also known as the bad journals like any result that you see coming out of predatory journals are not scientific research they have bypassed the peer review process they have not done the peer review process so they need not be true on the other hand you have reputed uh, uh, journals which do not come under this category those research uh, uh, channels uh, journals can be trusted so now here is a list okay i'm going to take you to this uh, website this website is called as the predatoryjournals.com okay so it's a very very uh, uh, important website where you can find whether the journalist that you are seeing the article from is a predatory or not i can remember the earlier um, journal that i talked about international uh, archives of medicine we can check whether that uh, journal is in this list or not all you have to do is control f and you can find international okay there you go can you see it international archives of medicine so now this journal is listed in this list of predatory journal which means that journal is not a reliable journal whatever result comes in this journal you should not be trusting it okay again so this is a very clear example where if you if they actually cite a source the if the original information or article has a source and from a particular journal you can actually check it in this website predatoryjournals.com and if that journal is in this list then it is something that should not be trusted i can give you another example remember the other journal i told you the journal of neuroscience we can check whether it is there journal of okay neuro spelling i think and you or see the journal of neuroscience it is not in this website which means it is a good journal it is not a predatory journal if so these guys are working very hard from different people across the world to create keep maintaining this list okay so the journal of neuroscience is not in this list so definitely it is not a predatory journal so the information that comes from this journal you can take it look i am not saying that you should be directly visiting this uh, website and study the article because like i told you that in the journal of neuroscience that article the, even the title was very complex so if you go and read the topic you may not understand but the point is the dailymail.co the other websites which are bringing you the information are they citing their information from a reputed journal or a predatory journal that information will help you to a large extent whether what you actually receive reading is a fake news or not fake news uh, this is uh, as far as science is concerned all this is science and there is another uh, website also here uh, which is the uh, bls list okay uh, again this is a very similar list to check the predatory journals again you have uh, publishers you have stand alone journals uh, this is a journal so you click on that uh, stand alone journals you can type the web sources i'm just typing it out let us see if this also has that uh, international archives of medicine i think it is slow international okay spelling is wrong i guess international okay o n a l i'm sorry it is slightly slow you see international archives of medicine again this is also listed in this this uh, uh, journal is also listed in the bls list so this bls list and also the predatory journal is a very very powerful source all you have to somehow find is the source of the article the source of the research if the source of the research once you have it 
you can put the journal's name in these two websites and find whether it's a reliable information or not okay so again um, this this uh, is something i hope it will help you um, again uh, if you really do not want to take the burden of you know reading a message and going to the journal then another simple step that you can follow from whom have you received the information or the article from like uh, is it from someone whom you trust meaning someone you, you you trust not like of course definitely you trust your parents or your friends but i'm saying like is he an expert or is he a scientist like who's saying this something like that but even then you should follow these steps you know uh, to make sure that uh, what you're having in your hand whether it's a whatsapp message or a forward um, it is it's just uh, important to track it so now uh, this is i think my last slide yes two slides i'm just checking so now what's the harm so now uh, when when this entire fake news is being propagated like like wildfire from across left and right or be it uh, right from sharing a picture of a solar eclipse taken from a plane to claiming that a, a solar eclipse can uh, kill the coronavirus or by having ginger uh, having normal ginger can uh, prevent a boost your immunity and prevent you from infected uh, getting infected with corona all this informations they shift the blame they actually undermine the actual scientific efforts being put by scientists across the world so they they uh, uh, actually we tend to lose track of the scientific solutions that we will actually focus on okay let me tell you an example when people actually spread the information like uh, the the coronavirus is because the, the origin of coronavirus is because of a solar eclipse that is just a complete unscientific claim but if enough people believe that eclipse is the reason why we have coronavirus then the actual problem the actual problem is climate crisis we have a lot of a uh, human animal uh, human animal conflicts so a lot of forests are being destroyed the interaction between wildlife and humans are getting more that is the reason why the the diseases are able to jump from animals to humans the actual problems will get diluted we will start losing on the actual scientific solutions rather get you know uh, caught in the, the illusion or the delusion of us an imaginary problem that eclipse is causing the virus so this is a very important thing that we stop the fake science so that we can actually focus on the actual solutions that will actually benefit the society then if you have an environment if you are living in an environment where everyone around you is like spreading fake science news or undermining so this will actually bring down the curiosity level the scientific curiosity or the innovation and research that you want to do will it will it may not be obvious in maybe one or two years but let's say 50 years down the line 20 to 30 years given enough time if the science uh, fake news is being spread all across and people are not being uh, looking at things with a scientific mind it will uh, slow down our scientific progress to great extent we may not uh, uh, see the effects of it today but we will very soon be seeing it how how will it be obvious because we won't have any scientific research or solutions coming out from our country while on the other hand countries that embrace scientific temper countries that focus on scientific literacy a lot of kids will actually be uh, you know uh, uh, taken in by science like uh, uh, wondered by science they would move ahead but if we keep feeding our society with all these kind of things our uh, naturally our our like temperament will go down and we will eventually given enough time we'll be like one of those countries where nothing comes out of our country that is honestly a very serious concern for me because right now e even today in this current environment i can see science is losing its originality or science is losing its actual value it is taken away by predatory science or predatory journals and i'm seriously concerned about it secondly i uh, lastly the, my last point there is a famous scientist called dr carl sagan i'm not sure how many of you know his name he's a astrophysicist or a science communicator and he says we live in a society exquisitely dependent on science and technology exquisitely meaning completely dependent on science and technology in which hardly anyone knows about science and technology this is a very serious concern just imagine everywhere around you just take a moment to reflect on this just everywhere around you you are using something or benefiting out of science the very video conference that we are having right now is an effect of science the very reason you have electricity in your home is because of science the very reason you are able to travel to your office for work or school for you know studying is because you have a vehicle a transport system again science or you have you have mobile phones that connect you to people across the country or across the world 
even we have sent rockets and spacecrafts to mars and beyond we are able to do it because of science even farmers or even people living in the remotest village who don't have the privilege of using the internet or computers even they have access to radios okay radios again nothing but science even people who do not use radios even people who are completely into natural farming they rely on the weather prediction given by the satellites they 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 look for when is the weather going to hit when is the monsoon going to strike how will severe is all those weather predictions so there is no aspect of our lives that is not touched by science and we as a society are completely dependent on it and we have progressed as a society because of the science and technology but imagine we live in a society where everything around us is fake news fake science. we we get tempted by a uh, fake science you know, we we start claiming things that that are unscientific whatever we as a society are reaping as a benefit today is hundreds and hundreds and years of work by several scientists in the past but if we continue to peddle this fake science and pseudo science in the years to come the future generations will suffer massively because we won't be progressing as a science a society yes so that is what i would like to say and end it and again some of the fact checking sites uh, uh, there is this uh, called snopes.com where you can check uh, some of the whatsapp forwards or facebook messages uh, you want to know whether it is true or false you can check this uh, website snopes.com you have boomlive.in so again just i'm showing you boomlive.in so these uh, are a set of people who are actually trying to uh, bring to you fake news like you know this is not just science fake news but generally uh, fake news you know misleading anti mask video by indian youth goes viral have and you have other news uh, fake news you see sequel to pandemic claims uh, corona virus is man made so all those generally the fake news that you have uh, uh, is being you can go to this website you see a uh, video of man cuddling cheetahs in south africa shared as rajasthan so this is again a typical whatsapp forward so this website is a very good website for you to uh, keep checking whether the uh, uh, whatsapp forwards that you receive are actually true or not so here uh, and then you have something called as uh, this boomlive.in is primarily focused on indian news like it has got dot in uh, a url so this is focusing on indian news then you have snopes.com snopes.com also uh, does a similar job but mostly concentrates on united states so um, you have all this fact checks so again this is search you can search uh, some keywords that you want to check whether it is true or not again snopes is a very good website it's a very reputed uh, uh, website to check your facts snopes.com and you have uh, uh, boom live and i'm sure there are other things also but you see all these things um uh, could kids with covid-19 be quarantined without parent and consent like you know there's so many news that's out there and uh, so this is their tagline we are debunking daily so this is something that you can look at yes i think i'm done with the, what i have say thank you guys i hope you found some i have a lot of things to share by the way i have a lot of examples but unfortunately uh, lack of time i had to stop now so uh, you guys can start ask your questions i'm done thank you yes kavya you can take uh, questions yeah. or ask them Mm-hmm. Thank you, Obliana. Uh, we are open to questions. Uh, please type in the chat box if you have any question. Or you can also ask. Uh, Plastic guys, is that real? Uh, yes, I uh, have been sorry about it. I've been uh, uh, listening. Uh, I've been also hearing a lot, uh, getting a lot of WhatsApp forwards uh, about the plastic guys, but that is not true. So plastic guys uh, getting into the hotels where actually people are. Uh, cooking the plastic rice no you cannot cook plastic like plastic rice will at certain temperature will melt so plastic rice in principle you can uh, make a plastic look like rice look if that is the question yes you can uh, mold a plastic in a way uh, give it a tone that it looks like rice but making it has no significant value and it is uh, we don't have that problem plastic rice problem is not there or if you have come across any other uh, messages you can share it to me i can try to tell whether uh, that 
is a fake news or not i so hope you guys remember those websites i'll i'll share it also uh, the uh, kavya will share the those website uh, sure. after the session you guys yeah. will do the websites to check the facts i'm surprised uh, not we have questions uh if there are not uh, any other questions i think uh, we will end the session now uh thank you so much obliana and uh, thank uh, i thank all of you for attending today's session i hope you like the session uh, please follow us on uh, instagram and uh, facebook leave comment uh, and reviews it would help us improve the session uh, okay okay there is another question obliana uh, atlantic ocean and the baltic ocean i think you are referring to that uh, uh, two different colors